Welcome to Kansas City. All of our barbecue dreams are coming true. Three kinds of sauce. Welcome to St. Louis. It's so big. Last week, we drove over 900 miles in two days, stopping in a map.town that happened to be home to the largest collection of Wizard of Oz memorabilia in the world. After a trip somewhere over the rainbow, we loaded up the RV and continued east on the quest for delicious barbecue and as much sightseeing as we could fit oh, wow. into 24 hours in Missouri's two biggest cities. If you're new here, we're Howard and Caitlin Newsdate. Dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been road tripping in our Winnebago Navion for over two years, visiting places like Alaska, Mexico, and just about everywhere in between. Our passion is sharing the amazing. This is epic. Wonderful and sometimes challenging parts of our life on the road with you. Ah, oh, uh, I just fell. Taking you off the beaten path, meeting incredible people, and trying new things. Each week, we bring you along with us to experience all the amazing places our little home on wheels takes us. Welcome to Kansas City. We only have a limited amount of time here, so we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. We're doing a streetcar tour of Kansas City. And first stop is Union Station and their model train exhibit. Built in 1914, Kansas City's Union Station has seen millions of visitors come through these doors. Oh, wow. But it almost closed for good in the 80s, sitting empty for years, even avoiding demolition. Luckily, thanks to a historic initiative that was passed in 1996, the beautiful train station was restored to its glory days, giving people like us a glimpse into its storied past with its 95-foot-tall ceiling, 3,500-pound chandeliers, and 6-foot-wide clock. You can even stroll through their permanent model train exhibit, housing over 8,000 square feet of model trains. Maintained by Union Station volunteers, it's a train lover's dream. The exhibit runs year-round and actually doubles in size during the Christmas season. And the first stop on our barbecue tour is Jack Stack. Whoa. Oh my gosh. This is a loaded pulled pork baked potato. I am so excited. It smells amazing. All of our barbecue dreams are coming true. Three kinds of sauce. Original, spicy, spicy got some heat, and hot. Am I gonna be able to eat that? This one's hot. <laughs> the hot is hot. It's so good. Wow. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> so good. Kaylin got them on her face. <laughs> There you go. That's the sign of a good barbecue meal. <laughs> you leave the restaurant with it all over you. <laughs> Jack Stack is kind of, uh, I would call it like an upscale, maybe a little more formal of a barbecue joint. Um, they have prime rib on the menu, so it's not your uh, greasy spoon, uh, pulled pork kind of plate. That was a good last minute decision. Oh, but now we need to go walk all this off, go do some more sightseeing. More sightseeing before more barbecue. Yeah. There's the sign for the streetcar. The KC streetcar is always free to ride, so we are gonna hop on it and take it all the way to City Market, which is a really cool area that has an awesome farmer's market on the weekends, but there's tons of shops and restaurants and all kinds of neat things. We found it. I think it goes two miles, but you can see it goes through the Arts District, the Power and Light District, all the way to the City Market. Next stop. It's a really cool public transit option. Market is part of River Market, which is a neighborhood here in Kansas City that dates back to 1857. And it's an area that has all kinds of worldly eclectic things, boutiques and grocers and different shops. You can see here we've got Italian, down here we've got Mediterranean, European. So it really is an area that you can get things from domestic all the way to more exotic and worldly. We stumbled across this local butcher, ironically called local pig, where they make everything in house. Uh, all the sausages, everything. We were actually watching them as, as they were making uh, chicken lollipops. Never heard of that before. It's like a chicken uh, where they, as they cook it, it kind of sticks on the bone and it literally looks like a lollipop. It's a great little spot. They have all kinds of local products like meats and cheeses and spreads and even like pickled things like uh, peppers and all that. So normally this building would be 
filled with vegetables and fruits and vendors of all kinds. This is the largest farmer's market in the area, and they host it every Saturday and Sunday, but unfortunately, we're here on Monday. So just imagine what it would look like. I'm so sad we don't have the pups with us right now because we found literally like a dog lover's paradise. So this is called Bar K or Bark and it's a dog park, restaurant, and bar all in one. So you can either get a membership, which is $2.25 for a year, or you just pay as you come and it's $10 for the first dog and then five for every dog after that. And you can come up here and like eat with your dog or you can watch while your dog's playing below. It's just such a cool concept and it's huge. They have like a playground for the dogs. They have, uh, what do they call them? Dog tenders <laughs> who kind of supervise the play. And it is a full service bar and restaurant. So you can come and have a meal, grab drinks, socialize with your friends while your dogs play and have a good time. We've never seen anything quite this elaborate for dog lovers like ourselves. <laughs> Welcome to the Kansas City Power and Light District. This is an $850 million entertainment destination featuring over 50 restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. So if you can't have a good time here, you can't have a good time in Kansas City. Only about two hours had passed since our last barbecue meal, so we headed to Joe's, a place the great Anthony Bourdain claimed is one of 13 places you must eat before you die. He wrote, people may disagree on who has the best barbecue. Here, the brisket, particularly the burnt ends, pulled pork, and ribs are all of a quality that meet the high standards even of Kansas City natives. It's the best barbecue in Kansas City, which makes it the best barbecue in the world. Pretty high accolade, and we can attest it was pretty darn good. It's a burnt ends quesadilla. Mm. Never had one of those. Rocket pig, a pulled pork slider, but it has fried jalapenos, pepper jack cheese, and other yummy stuff. Bacon. Oh, and bacon. Man, how could you forget the bacon, Howard? <laughs> We have so many leftovers. We've been trying to eat as much barbecue as we can. I'm failing. And I love to eat. It's so filling. Well, the key is small bites. I eat a bunch of small bites. Yeah, I just go all in and then I get too full. <laughs> so I'm struggling. I want to nap. And with that, it was time to say goodbye to Kansas City and continue east. Caitlin, yeah. back in the driver's seat again. Yeah, I'm in control. Everybody buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> Next stop, Illinois, question mark? I guess, I mean, we're- We're going to St. Louis. We're going to St. Louis, but we're staying at a Boondockers Welcome. The Boondockers Welcome is actually across the river in Illinois. All right, here we go. Welcome to St. Louis. We're in the Central West End neighborhood and we're gonna be heading to some lunch. First stop is Salt and Smoke, which is an awesome barbecue slash bourbon slash beer. I don't think we're gonna be having the other two, but. <laughs> but barbecue! But barbecue! I'm starving. A relative newcomer to the St. Louis barbecue scene, Salt and Smoke has rapidly gained a loyal following from its first location in 2014 on Del Mar Boulevard to the any day now opening of their fifth outpost in Ballpark Village. We have a tray of sauces. We have sauce one, sauce two, sauce three, and four. <laughs> and here it comes. Wow. Here you go. Oh, Enjoy. Thank you. thank you. We tried a sampling of ribs, chicken, and pulled pork. It may not be as well known as Pappy's Smokehouse and other St. Louis barbecue institutions, but we can attest the food and experience definitely meets the hype. We've done it. We are at the arch. It's so big! And it is as tall as it is wide. I know that. But man, oh man. It's really cool looking. So pretty awesome that you can save three bucks per ticket if you have your National Parks annual pass, which we do. Success. Please watch your head and step as you do so as the door is only about four foot high opening. That's crazy. We're like in a tiny little pod. This is slightly too
terrifying. I have no idea what to expect. This definitely wasn't it. I guess because of COVID right now, like we get our own pot. Right. Which is kind of cool. Watch any of our Mexico videos, particularly our Fedlon one. You know I'm not the biggest fan of Ferris wheels. So, I'm just trying to breathe. In just a few minutes, we were 630 feet or 63 stories in the air, taking in the views of downtown St. Louis from inside the tallest man-made monument in the U.S. Wow! <laughs> Whoa. You spend about 10 minutes at the top. We're really high up here which is more than enough time to snap a few pictures before taking another capsule back down the other side. And if you're like me, still no less frightening. In fact, it's a bit faster thanks to gravity. So we just finished at the arch, which was super cool. I'm really glad we did it. Super bad. Yes, that was awesome. And now we're on a walking tour before it gets too dark. Yeah, we're gonna be heading uh, straight out from the arch all the way to Union Station. And fingers crossed, we might actually get to see the light show at Union Station. That building used to be one of the tallest skyscrapers in the world. <laughs> that little thing. <laughs> now it's next to that. Our little walking tour took us through City Garden Sculpture Park with incredible works of art. Funded by a local nonprofit that supports public art, the garden opened in 2009. Visitors are encouraged to touch the 24 masterpieces and even walk inside some of them. After getting our art fix, we made it to Union Station just in time for their nightly 3D light show. It was created by Technomedia, the same company who works with Cirque du Soleil. Incredible displays of birds, flowers, and fireworks are cast onto the 65-foot tall ceiling of the lobby. With a totally different show and visuals every hour, some include music from the Beatles and Queen, it's totally worth sticking around to see another show. Next week, we share our 2021 travel plans, including the biggest adventure we've ever attempted. We've done Mexico, Alaska, even toward Chernobyl. Any guesses where we're heading in the RV? You won't want to miss all the news, so remember to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications of all our newest episodes. We'll see you next week.